Good morning. <clears throat> it's easy to imagine that kids are going hungry in Afghanistan or Guatemala, places like that. It's almost impossible for me to conceive of the fact that right here in Brevard County, kids are going hungry as well. But that's the sad truth. As I mentioned in the video, we're, we're feeding over, we fed over 1,600 kids last year uh, at 41 elementary schools. But our organization has very humble beginnings. We started eight years ago because we learned that this was a problem here in the county. So we decided to follow something that Mother Teresa once said. And she said, if you can't feed 100 people, feed one. And that's what we did. We started feeding 27 kids at Riviera Elementary School down in Palm Bay because we knew 100% of those kids were eligible for that national free or reduced lunch program, which is a key indicator of hunger and poverty in our area. Largely, because of the faith-based community here in Brevard County embracing our mission, we have grown consistently over the last eight years. Going into this new school year, we're estimating that we're going to feed over 1,900 kids every week at 45 elementary schools. That's awesome. But the sad, <laughs> thank you. But the sad truth is, that's not enough. Our estimates show that the kids that are eligible for that program continue to increase here in Brevard County. Over 3,000 kids need our services right now, and we're only able to get to 1,900 because of our limited resources. Why is this such a problem here in Brevard County? We, we launched a rocket last night up into space. We are sending food up to the International Space Station, and yet we can't feed our kids here in Brevard County. Brevard County is great. Brevard County is home for me. I love it here. I can't imagine living anywhere else. But the fact that there are kids every night going to bed hungry rips my heart apart. There are some logical reasons why this is happening. Rent is at an all-time high in Brevard County. If you don't own a home, you are paying premium dollar for rent. Some families spending as much as 65% of their monthly income on rent. That doesn't leave a lot for food, clothing, transportation, utilities, everything else that goes into raising a family. If you're a single parent raising two or three kids, it's nearly impossible to make ends meet. I'm not going to make excuses for people that make bad decisions either. If you're getting hooked on drugs and not feeding your kid, you're a bad parent. If you're buying flatter screen TVs and new cell phones and not feeding your kid, you're a bad parent. Unfortunately, I can't fix those parents. But I'm also not willing to stand by and let those kids go hungry because of those situations. I mentioned rent and our uh, lack of affordable housing here in the county. This is something we're going to have to address, folks. And I know none of us want to live next door to that affordable housing complex. But the lack of affordable housing in this county is putting a huge strain on our families. We're going to need to address it somehow. We're waiting for our new free and reduced lunch population numbers to come out from our school board once school starts. But we anticipate that this year we're going to see a huge increase in the kids that need that program. Hurricane Irma has a big effect on that. We had a lot of people move to our county that are still struggling to put food on the table. It saddens me every day to know that kids tonight, here in Brevard County, are going to go home to a tent in a park. While we enjoy our 72 miles of coastline, beautiful coastline, that people from all over the world come to see, 
We have kids that have no home to go home to tonight. So we're asking for your help. We're asking for your help in any way that you can give it. The number one way, I think, for you is to help us spread the word throughout Brevard County that kids need our help. Take a brochure at the back of the church as you leave. Go on Facebook and share the video. Tell your friends, tell your family. I honestly believe that this is an, a, an awareness problem. If people throughout the county knew that this was a problem and the impact that this is going to have, we would fix this. It's easy. I could fix this problem overnight, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world. In the, in the world. It just takes money and resources to do this. The problem is these kids, as I mentioned, the, the free lunch program, they get breakfast, they get lunch Monday through Friday every day that they attend school. The problem is that lunch on Friday is oftentimes their last nutritious meal they get until they come back to school on Monday morning, 68 hours later. We all know what's going to happen to those kids. Without eating, they're going to be sick more often. It's going to take them longer to recover because their bodies don't have the nutrition they need to be healthy. They're going to be more prone to behavioral and emotional outbursts, not because they're bad kids, but because they're hungry. I'm sure we've all seen those Snickers commercials where people turn into like other bad people because they're hungry, right? Doesn't that happen? Kids that don't eat breakfast before they come to school test on average 17 points lower in math skills just because they didn't eat breakfast two grade levels imagine coming to school on monday after having not eaten since friday and be expected to be successful there's no way that that's going to happen so what we do is we put together a packet of food just like this this is what you're going to be doing next saturday by the way is packing about a thousand of these right oh my gosh that's awesome um, we put together this packet of food, and we do really 95% of this process. We go out and we raise money, we buy the food, we bring it into our warehouse. We have volunteers like you come in and pack the, pack the bags, and then we have volunteers deliver the food to the schools. Once our volunteers drop the food off at the schools, we're done. But that's all the easy work. That last 5% is the most difficult part of this process, and that's making that Solomon-like decision of who gets a food packet and who doesn't. And let me give you an example uh, that will put that into perspective. Uh, a few months ago, I was at Oak Park Elementary School up in Titusville. We send 54 packets of food there each and every week. The teachers there estimate the need at over 200 kids that need our services. So imagine you're now in charge of Oak Park Elementary School. We're giving you 54 packets of food, but in front of you, you have over 200 kids, all of whom you know are hungry, and you have to make that decision. Thank God that's not me. We leave that decision up to the teachers and the counselors at those schools because they're the ones that know who's coming to school hungry every Monday morning. And so they make that decision. Next Saturday, uh, if you're willing, you'll come to our uh, donated warehouse in Coco and pack food that will go out to kids that are in need that next week at 45 elementary schools all over the county. You'll give these kids hope. You'll give these kids the resources that they need to be successful. Sheriff Ivy says, if you want to keep kids out of juvie, feed them. Sounds like a pretty simple solution to me. But it's true. Kids that come from these homes where they're not getting food are desperate. Desperate people do desperate things. I want Brevard County to be a place where my grandkids can grow and flourish, raise families of their own, and be successful. 
It can't happen unless we feed our kids. We serve elementary schools. I'm not saying that there's not kids that are hungry in middle school or high school. If you're hungry in elementary school and you graduate and you go on to middle school, it makes sense to think that you're going to be hungry there too, unless your family's uh, had a, a major economic breakthrough. But our limited resources only allow us to serve a fraction of the need. But our research also shows us that the earlier on in a person's life that you address a nutritional deficit, the bigger impact you're going to have. We are literally breaking the cycle of poverty in this county by providing these food packages. Because if you don't graduate from high school, you're going to work a minimum wage job. You're going to have kids. You're going to struggle to provide for your family. Your kids are more than likely not going to graduate from high school, go on to work a minimum wage job, have kids, and struggle to provide for their family. And that cycle continues and continues for generations. But by allowing and encouraging these kids to be successful, they're going to go on to graduate from high school. Maybe go on to tech school or even college and have more opportunities in their lives than their parents did so that they can provide for their families and thus break that cycle of poverty. That's the hope that I have. And I truly believe that just by this simple food packet, we could have that kind of impact on Brevard County. So we ask that you help. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, we want 50 volunteers. Wow, that's awesome. That's going to be an exciting day. I look forward to seeing you there. Um, it, it, it is amazing. You can bring your kids. You can bring your grandkids. It gives you that opportunity to have that conversation with your kids. Not every kid comes home to a full pantry of food every night and gets to go to Chick-fil-A every Saturday. As I mentioned, some kids are going home to a tent in a park or the back seat of a car tonight. Thank you so much for your help and your, your support. Organizations like this church are the future of our county. And they're the future of healthy, successful families, a healthy, successful society. Because you provide hope, you provide uh, resources to people that truly need it. I met a family, one of the families, we don't know any of the kids we serve, right? Because we drop the food off at the school and the teachers are the ones that decide who gets food. So if you ask me, how many females do you serve? I have no idea. How many males do you serve? What are their ages? I have no idea. The teachers decide that. But I was at a, an, uh, an event a few weeks ago and this woman came up to me and she said, oh my God, Children's Hunger Project, I love this. My family got resources from you. What happened was the mother and father, the father got a job in Titusville. They were living up in Ohio. So they moved to Titusville. Three kids, mother and father, have a good job. As soon as they get here, the job fell through. They were homeless, living in a motel for eight months. And one of the saving graces for that family was two of the kids, two of the girls, got on the Children's Hunger Project program at school and they received one of these every week. And the mom told me that, that knowing that that food packet was coming every Friday was one of the salvations that got them through that tough time in life. Now everything's good. The husband got a new job. They've got their own apartment. Things are good, but for eight months, they were truly destitute and needed some kind of help. And that's the help that you can provide. So I truly appreciate uh, what you do. I truly appreciate this church. There's more information on the back. Uh, Cheryl and I will be available uh, after the service, if you wish. And uh, thank you so much for everything that you do in our, our community.
wow, it's 1017, so I can still preach. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <clears throat> this is what I want you to do. I want you to remember that Christianity is not a spectator sport. Paul says we need to live a life that is worthy of the calling. And so I'm going to ask you to do something right now. If you have a smartphone, take it out of your pocket. And I want you to go to your reminders or whatever. If you have an iPhone, it's reminders. It might be a different app if you don't have an iPhone. Don't tell Matt you don't have an iPhone because he might get upset. He's very Apple loyal. And I want you to set a reminder for later on today for the following things. First of all, I want you to look for the video that's going to launch later this afternoon with Keith's talk. And I want you to go on Facebook, if you have a Facebook account, and I want you to share that video on, on your Facebook page. And I want you to mark the privacy setting to public so that everyone can see it and that when other people share it, it will be shared with more than just your friends. Okay? The second thing I want you to do is I want you to set a reminder for either tonight or tomorrow morning, and I want you to pray for all of those folks who are working in the Children's Hunger Project, that God will continue to send them the resources that they need, including the resources that will be coming through us to do the work that God has called them to do, and that you will pray for God to give them vision for the future, continued guidance in their organization, and also the courage and the strength and the hope to keep pushing through despite the bad odds that they're facing, as you heard. There's, uh, they're meeting a lot of needs, but there's a whole lot more, and I can imagine that would be discouraging as you're, tr as you're trying to make the decisions about how much food to get around to the different families. Okay? So those are two things that you can do that are not going to cost you any time and any money. The third thing I want you to do is I want you to grab perhaps more than one flyer in the back, and I want you to take it with you, and I want you to give it, I want you to give those flyers out to somebody else. Um, maybe you can leave it on the table at the restaurant, give it to the cashier at Publix, but I want you to, to, to help them get the word out by getting that flyer out. And then here's, this is the third reminder I want you to mark on your phone. Before Tuesday evening, I want you to pray about one person that you can bring to this pack on Saturday. I expect everyone to sign up that is able. And, and folks, even if you have mobility issues, um, this is not hard. You literally take food, put it in a bag, zip it up, and put it on a table. Just about anybody can do that. And even if you do have mobility issues and you fatigue quickly, even if you came and packed 10 bags, that would be a huge help. But I don't just want you to come by yourself. I want you to think of one other person that you can invite to come with you that is not here this morning that you can bring along because we have about 20 or 25 volunteers signed up. We want to get 50. We shoot big here, guys. We, we have big goals, God-sized goals. And we're probably not going to meet that goal of 50 volunteers unless you invite someone from outside of our community to come with you. And you can bring as many people as you want. Just make sure that, um, that they get the, li the liability waiver, which you can uh, get on the church Facebook page. We also sent out a church-wide email that you might have received. You can forward that on to somebody else, and they can click the hot link, or you can go to the, to the Children's Hunger Project website, uh, and you can get that liability waiver. And just fill that out and make sure the people that are coming with you fill that out and bring it with them so that we're not spending a lot of time doing waivers and we can spend the vast majority of our time packing food. Now, if you are willing to do everything that I've mentioned to the best of your ability. Now, if you're not going to be here on Saturday, we don't expect you to catch a flight here and back to San Francisco or something. But if you're able to do everything in your power to do these things, say amen and say it loud. Okay, this is important, folks. This is really important. If you have kids, think about your own children and how you would feel as a parent if you had to send them to bed hungry at night. This is a big deal. And this is a one-time thing. We're, gonna, we're hoping this is going to be our summer project continuing through uh, years and years to come. But we're asking you to do this once a year. Uh, and now that the food drive is over, the only other commitment is just a few hours, one Saturday out of 365 days. 
So I hope that you will join me. Em and I will be there, uh, and, and I'm going to stay as long as I am physically able until we pack a 1,000 meals, and I hope that you will join us too. So Keith, thank you so much. Cheryl, thank you for being here. I'm going to invite Matt and the praise band to come forward. I won't preach. You guys are going to be flabbergasted when we get out two minutes early. Um, but I am going to invite you to stand um, as we move to our closing song. And I want you to remember that the word resurrection literally means to stand again. And it's because of God's forgiveness, God's love, God's power in our life that we can stand up again and hold our chins high and move toward becoming the person that God is calling us to be. And so I'd invite you to offer your best praise and worship as we sing our last song and conclude our service this morning.